growing up, I was always in nature. Uh, at that time, there was no career in protecting the environment, really. So my sister played the violin. It's working with wood. It's you know, it's a craft. So I decided to uh, yeah to become a violin maker. It isn't just about making an instrument. It's also a, cert a certain methodology. So being a violin maker and thinking you know there's something I can do beyond this, um, and there was actually an option to become a ship's carpenter on a research ship going to Antarctica, and I thought this is the chance. I had sort of an iceberg watch, so I would stand on the bow of the ship, and it was just nothing. I felt that I had a lot more perspective and the practical work on board a ship, working in a team, uh, going to Antarctica, crossing the Southern Ocean, which is a notoriously dangerous sea, knowing that actually if anything goes wrong, uh, the help can't be here in time. And suddenly I heard something, and I looked down, and there's about 20 killer whales, orcas, crossing right in front of the ship, one of them like turning and looking up at us. And I'm, you know, looking over the bow of the ship thinking, wow, this, you know, this is pristine nature. There's probably hardly ever been humans in this part of the world. And I think that was a moment where I really thought, you know, I want to dedicate my life to, yeah, to really protecting, protecting this ocean. And increasingly what really struck me was that actually there's a lot of protection in the ocean but it's primarily protected on paper. Um, and that's, I think, when the idea of the Sea Ranger Service was born. Yeah, when we talk about a transition towards a more sustainable future, um, we need to have a serious plan on making that reality. Then that's essentially then became the idea of running the Sea Ranger Service also pretty much as a social business. The work of Sea Rangers is super diverse, flying drones, to see if big cargo ships are not uh, polluting. Um, it can be that we look underwater to see if nature is restoring itself. We take water samples looking at plastic pollution. So we don't do campaigns, we don't do our own projects. We always work directly with government. I realized that actually this is life changing for me and it could be life changing for other people. And maybe by creating this Sea Ranger role, this is a way to get young people a new perspective. Actually, in the coastal areas around the world, in the port cities, that's where the highest youth unemployment is. That's where people are in need of jobs. IKEA and you know, Sea Rangers, what has that got to do with each other? But IKEA has played a really crucial role at a very specific moment in bringing in the expertise and the guidance. If you look at uh, first the, their business model and operational model, how it has been designed, you have three different uh, problems and one solution. So you have unemployment among youth, the young generation. You have unemployment among elderly people with great knowledge, great experiences that you can pass on and you should pass on to the young generation as soon as you can. You have then the environmental interest. They are building ships, they watch the seas and protect the seas and the oceans. And they connect these dots and say, how can we find a solution for all those problems? That's what they did. That's truly social entrepreneurship. I mean, you have the social aspects and you have the entrepreneurship. It's, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just fantastic. One of the things that, that, that strikes me is, well, maybe, you know, on the face of it, you think IKEA, big company, you know, a corporation, well, but actually there's a real important lesson to learn here. If you look at IKEA, of course, the model, the machine that they've built, uh, the, the method of how you come into an IKEA store and how you walk through it, it's so cleverly designed. So because it runs as a business, it has to run really smooth and efficiently. If we can run the restoration of our planet with the same efficiency, that's probably there's a lot more we can do with the money we have. And we can really learn from people in business to make a really profound difference on, on accelerating this process of restoring the planet. And we now believe it's the first time ever that environmental conservation, that a solution for nature, is replicated around the world uh, using such a franchise model. 
we are all obviously inspired by sea ranges and, and me personally very much so for many reasons. I mean, you can look at the founder of the business, extremely well equipped uh, to be in development innovation. You have to have experience, you have to have knowledge about different areas than your core area. That's what innovation is about. So I take learnings from one area and see, can I apply them to this specific problem that I have at hand? What we have found is a model to scale, and that scalability is ongoing. IKEA is a company that at its very core is very committed to making a transition uh, to operating as a company, um, you know, not just sustainable, but regeneratively. And we felt, okay, here's a company making a real commitment to say, we see a problem in the world and we see that social entrepreneurs, uh, like in the Sea Ranger service, are making a difference and using entrepreneurship. This is a way to protect nature that works for people. But it also was about social impacts, creating jobs, getting youth out of unemployment, you know, getting them life skills that would turn their life around. And we now increasingly do so with also the help of IKEA. The near future for us is essentially taking the first steps internationally with the franchising. Uh, UK and Norway, potentially South Africa, this year will be the first countries where we're now scaling and uh, or I would say replicating this, this approach. And I just can't wait to train sea rangers in these countries, you know, um, and to have more ships operating out at sea. We are probably more, or should be probably more inspired by them than the other way around. <laughs>